Naka and welcome to the Lens at 177 show. It's a huge week for sports this week. With a lot of uh, sporting events happening. We have the Fijian Rua playing the Blues in the West. We have the Fiji Rugby Union AGM. A lot of people looking forward to that one as well. And of course, here in Suva, yes. we have the 2023 Coca-Cola Games Finals. Huge expectations from that. More than 2,000 athletes uh, expected to converge at the HFC Bank Stadium. It's the, they call it the biggest uh, event in the region, sporting event in the region. And uh, today we'll have uh, stakeholders from uh, different business houses uh, talking about the Coca-Cola Games. Uh, first up uh, with us here today uh, in uh, talking about security at this year's Games is uh, the uh, Chief of Operations of the Fiji Police Force, uh, ACP Levi Andrew. Uh, Mr. Andrew, thank you for taking out your time okay. and speaking to thank us. Uh, uh, with the Games happening this week, uh, some reports already coming up from the zonal meets. Uh, uh, briefly on uh, how security arrangements are being made for the Games this week. Uh, thank you, Roy. Uh, from the uh, Fiji Police Force um, <coughs> uh, perspective on uh, our prep uh, in regards to uh, the coverage uh, on our um, on the Coca Cola Games uh, for 2023, uh, we have stepped up our preparation uh, this um, in this year's meet. Mm. Looking at the build-up that um, uh, during the uh, zone meets, mm. and uh, we've seen uh, that we've also received reports in regards to some of uh, the miss behaviors mm. by students eh? mm. so the we are not taking it lightly for this year uh, as uh, we know that the, the Fiji police was uh, as of this morning we have stepped up with our prep and uh, we are going to ensure uh, that uh, the games is incident free mm. so apart from security at uh, the HFC Bank Stadium uh, on the three days we have uh, I mean there's there's been video circulating out on social media of uh, misbehavement of students uh, on <coughs> buses on the streets uh, what are the plans of the force uh, in terms of security after the games uh, apart from security at the HFC Bank Stadium yeah apart from the uh, security at the um, at the ANZ uh, at the uh, HFC. HFC Stadium um, we have also put up a uh, plans um, uh, in place uh, for the coverage. Uh, uh, we'll be reaching out to all the bus uh, stations, uh, but bus stations, bus stops, and also uh, where they are grouping. See? Uh, those are the areas uh, that we are going to target um, uh, students, um, uh, especially in groupings, uh, because uh, the theme for our Operation uh, Coca-Cola Games this year is Say No to Drugs. It's a drug-free um, Coca-Cola Games, and uh, that is where uh, we have plans um, uh, for the, the uh, Coca-Cola Games for this year. Mm -hmm. We are not only going to target coverage of uh, the stadium, but the outer cordon of uh, uh, the, um, uh, the, um, the place uh, where the Coca-Cola Games will be. Mm. In the past years, we have seen uh, the K9 unit uh, being involved at yes. the stadium. We've, had, we've seen the force use drones uh, to have, have an overcast overview of uh, what's happening at the yeah. stadium. Uh, maybe some similar things are happening this time around as well? Yes, as usual. Uh, we are going to utilize all our capabilities uh, mm. in order to, uh, to achieve uh, the mission of uh, the Coca-Cola Games uh, this year. Uh, that is uh, uh, drug-free and also incident-free. Mm. Uh, all uh, the capabilities, are, as I've said, that, uh, looking at the HR, and even uh, we are going to utilize our uh, 185 recruits uh, to, uh, as part of our plans, mm. and uh, we are going to deploy them uh, within uh, the city after the games mm. as uh, part of their visibility mm. in um, trying to prevent uh, the crimes and also to protect uh, our loved ones, uh, children who are going to partake in our Coca-Cola Games mm. uh, this year. Mm. Apart from the 185 uh, uh, recruits, as you mentioned, yes. what's the total number, approximate number that you're so looking at? Almost 300 uh, officers uh, that will be involved mm. into this uh, Coca-Cola Games mm. uh, for our police um, task force. Um, it's going to be a task force uh, concept that we are going to, we have uh, organized for this year uh, to produce that conducive and uh, environment for Mm. Or this year's uh, Coca Cola Games. Mm. So, 300 uh, officers, and we're yeah. talking about about 20,000 people and students per day. Yes. Uh, 
your mission would not be completed without the help of uh, teachers and parents, of course, uh, they will need to provide a hand in making sure that security of the games uh, is uh, safe. Uh, your message to, uh, or your advice to parents and teachers uh, as you head into the games? It's right, uh, as, as in the past years, yeah, uh, we are here just to complement uh, each other. They need to complement, we need to complement each other. Uh, mm -hmm. The teachers, uh, even the parents, yeah? uh, they, are, they play a very vital role. Yeah? Uh, looking at some of uh, of our plans for this year, uh, our community policing team, uh, they are going to visit uh, the schools uh, that uh, they are accommodated around uh, the Suva Nursery Corridor uh, on uh, all safety tips mm. and also crime prevention tips. So that is all part and parcel of our plan uh, to, um, to address them um, uh, in their camps uh, before they um, much into uh, mm. the HFC stadium. Mm. Uh, so, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, the, as, as much as we want, we will have incidents, a few for sure, which we, as much as we try to mm. evade, we, there will be some incidents that might come up. A message to students maybe who, who are already planning to do these things, who are trying to spoil the party for those who are planning to do good things, what consequences would they face if they are ca caught uh, doing an illegal, illegal activity? It's just a message to uh, the students and even the teachers eh, uh, who will be accompanying uh, your uh, school uh, um, teams uh, for this year's um, Coca-Cola Games. Uh, the Fiji Police Force will not take uh, anything lightly if they are going to um, uh, involve in any illegal activity or any breach, uh, we are going to enforce uh, the law. Uh, as uh, uh, for the Fiji Police Force, uh, we are only answerable to the law, and everyone should be answerable to the law mm. uh, in this uh, year's uh, Cola Games. Mm. So you've uh, met with the organizers uh, here this week, earlier this week, they came to meet with you. Uh, I'm sure we want a Games uh, free of incidents. Yes. There's uh, three days of uh, good athletics competition, track and field. There's, there'll be huge yeah. crowd support from, uh, for a lot of teams. Uh, your final message to everyone that will be involved in these games so that we could have uh, an incident-free games? My final uh, message for um, uh, the general public uh, who will be out in Suva um, to uh, first they must, uh, you must have your personal security first. You must look after yourself and also uh, look after your properties. Um, and we've seen uh, in the past uh, years, uh, tomorrow I'll be talking to the nightclub owners uh, because students, we want to protect them, um, especially the minors. Uh, we have officers, we have uh, 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 that, that have been tasked mm. to uh, move around nightclubs and they'll be working along with uh, all the nightclub owners eh, to ensure that uh, we are not going to allow uh, minus into the nightclubs mm -hmm. uh, as part of our security uh, uh, arrangement for this task force. Mm. So it's going to be general and uh, not only that uh, and also on the public uh, the traffic operation uh, we are going to um, we have directed them uh, to stop the buses that are coming and at the same time give that uh, advisory to them mm. uh, for their safety uh, because we want to come for the children, for our children to come and enjoy the games mm. and uh, so that uh, they return and they achieve uh, their dream uh, mm. for coming for this uh, year's uh, Coca Cola game. Win a Swire Shipping Fiji Endure Kids jersey! Simply like, share, and follow our Fiji Times Kyla Facebook page, then tag in a friend on your shared post and mention who your favorite Swire Shipping Fiji Endure player is. All reactions will then go into a draw to win one of two Fiji and Red jerseys totally up for grabs. Conditions apply. Good evening and welcome back to The Lens at 177. Uh, we are talking about the 2023 Cold Games this evening and uh, with us right now is uh, Athletics Fiji national coach, uh, not a new face to Athletic Fiji, of course, Albert Miller. Mr. Miller, thank you for your time to speak to the Fiji Times. Uh, Code Games up again, another year, another Code Games. Uh, Mr. Miller, what are, ex uh, are the expectations of Athletics Fiji from this year's Games? 
Well, I think this year is probably going to be uh, an interesting uh, year, eh? for, for especially for the competitions. Uh, as we probably we've been looking at analyzing the results from the different zones, and really, there's no you know it's going to be down to the why. It might come down to to the relays, eh? mm. but it's always exciting uh, for us uh, in athletics, uh, since this is an opportunity for us to to identify you know, some talented athletes, especially leading up to the Pacific Games uh, at the end of the year. Mm. Uh, every year we have the Cold Games. Every year we talk about it. We start with the school interhouses, we have the zones, and then we come to the Cold Games. A lot of expectations and thousands of people involved, thousands of dollars involved. But what is in there for athletes after the Cold Games? We have, uh, we have seen in the past, we have a handful coming out which go on to represent uh, the nation at uh, different events uh, but what is in there for other athletes who 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 can be developed into national heroes but uh, we have seen many who miss out and what they do is they usually opt for another sport for mm. for revenue for income uh, your thoughts uh, your plans on what what can be done because this is something that uh, we've always discussed eh? uh, and uh, something that uh, that we're, we're working on where we, you know, basically, basically partner with uh, Fiji Secondary School, you know, athletics, mm. uh, where we can provide a pathway for, you know, up, up and coming athletes. Because uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's about a legacy, eh? yeah. Uh, right now, uh, the legacy is only the, the event, the Coca-Cola Games, eh? And like you said, rightfully so, after that, there's really no legacy that's left behind. Mm. Uh, something that, you know, we can discuss with the sponsors, you know, where, you know, maybe scholarships or something uh, that can be provided uh, to athletes. Uh, and we've been thrashing around some ideas of maybe, you know, with, uh, uh, in cooperation with the Fiji Secondary School, we can come up with, say, under uh, the sub junior team, junior team, inter team for both men and women, identify the real, the cream of the crop mm. and say these are the, yeah, this is the team that we've selected that might have an opportunity to, you know, can represent Fiji to the Pacific School Games in Australia or to the, you know, games in New Zealand, you know, uh, so, so that the athletes can see, oh, okay, there's, there's opportunities. Uh, but like you said, uh, you know, most of our athletes uh, that uh, do well in Coca-Cola, uh, as soon as it's over, you know, we have a hard time, <laughs> you know, trying to locate them. Uh, some of them go to rugby, uh, but there's a handful that stays back and, you know, just love the sport of athletics. So these are the people they'll be trying to tap into because mm. we know the best athletes are always going to go somewhere. Mm. Yeah, so uh, rather than looking at all the athletes that took one, you know, the top three, we look at the other ones that that maybe with, with a bit of coaching might become, you know, uh, mm. uh, useful to us later on. So, you know, all in all, we, we just have to work together with secondary school mm. and maybe other sports, see where we can basically share and care the athletes uh, uh, so that, uh, it, you know, it's, it's benefit to, uh, you know, across the board. Mm. Talking about athletes uh, joining other sports, uh, rugby is one that uh, that we have seen in the past, of course, uh, Pacific uh, Sprinting, Banuve went to rugby, but mm -hmm. then opted to come back to athletics again. Uh, what can be done? Uh, you've been there for more than four decades as an athlete and then coaching. What do you think needs to be done to stop this from happening? We can produce better results. We can, we can get the top three at Commonwealth mm -hmm. and Olympics. We have done it in other sports. We can always do it in athletics as well. Oh, do you, do you see a pathway, a plan that, that we can do, that we can uh, maybe follow to achieve it? I mean, definitely, I think, you know, there's a way of, of you know, trying to tackle the issue. Uh, you know, on the same token, we, we've had three of our best female sprinters all. Right. One played for Helena Young, played for the Reds. Yes. Uh, and we are very proud of the fact that we, you know, we produce these athletes, but uh, nobody's really giving us, uh, <laughs> yeah. giving us the benefit of the yeah. doubt eh, to say, oh, you know, thank you, Athletics Fiji, for mm -hmm. you know, for developing this athlete. You know, you got Eunice Messe and Laisani, who is also playing in the 15s. 
uh, you know, we can't really stop them, you know, to be honest. Uh, we don't have the financial resources or the means to hold them back. Uh, we're lucky in the sense that uh, we have a few scholarships offered by Oceania Foundation, but it's only a few, a few scholarships, mm -hmm. two or three at the most, uh, where athletes go uh, get an opportunity to, to study and train in the U.S. Yeah. So if we, you know, the one idea that's going around is if we localize the scholarship, maybe we can have more people uh, offered, you know, mm -hmm. uh, scholarships and they can go to USP, FNU, you know, uh, uh, local institutions so that we can basically spread the dollar and, and attract more, you know, more talented athletes. Mm. Uh, back at the cold games, so we have the Pacific Games uh, later this year, the Olympic Games uh, in Paris next year. Uh, something to look forward to maybe for the athletes competing at the Coke Games. You never know, we, we get a surprise timing and uh, you know they, they, they could make their way to the national team. You'll, you'll have your eyes out for someone like that? Yeah, you know, like I said, uh, the zone meets, we've had some really eye-openers as far as, especially mm -hmm. in the sprints, yeah? Yeah. Uh, you know, we've, we've, we've been very lucky that, you know, Mbanu has been around. You know, and it's very rare to have athletes like that, you know, like, like us, for us, we, you know, for 20 years we were competing for Fiji. Mm -hmm. uh, but nowadays, you know, athletes come and go. So with the talent that's out there now, we are very surprised even with the women, you know, even though we've lost three of our very good female sprinters, uh, you'd be amazed how many new sprinters that are coming up that are running, you know, low 12 seconds in 100. So this is a good indication. There's still, you know, very good sprinters out there. Uh, and uh, for them, luckily, we have the Pacific Games coming up in, in November. So if we can include them in our teams, hopefully they'll, you know, they'll stick around for a few more years before they decide to go elsewhere. Mm. Finally, you've, uh, you were in uh, India recently. Mm -hmm. uh, you're part of uh, World Athletics as well. Uh, how could I mean, Take us through what, what, what was the trip all about. I was one of the three lecturers that was uh, invited uh, by the Indian Athletic Federation to, to lecture in a level two uh, course for coaches. Mm. So it involved all coaches from throughout India. Uh, I lectured in, uh, on multi-events, that's my, sort of my specialty. We had a, co a lecturer from uh, Malaysia, he's lectured in the sprints, and a local coach who lectured in throws. And uh, this program, uh, as we know, India is really up and coming nation in athletics. They've had some really eye openers as far as uh, a talent, eh? especially in the jumping events. Uh, they are some of the best uh, athletes around. Mm. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, they, the National Institute of Sports is housed in an old palace that used to belong to a, old, uh, a king whose family donated uh, the palace uh, property basically to, to the Sports Association of India. I think it's like five acres by five acres or big. It's a humongous uh, facility. And, uh, and that's where they house uh, you know, the National Institute of Sports. On the ground level, they have the, all the administration and on the, uh, you know, on the few f uh, stories up, they have uh, all the lecture, lecture halls. And the whole campus is, is basically made up uh, for national teams uh, training-wise, you know. Mm -hmm. So they've got swimming pools, they've got weight uh, facilities, they've got hockey fields, soccer field, you name it. They've got two tracks side by side. And uh, it's just amazing. I mean, uh, you know, it's, you know I, I made a remark to some of the coaches. I said, man, why, in, you know, why would you want to go somewhere else when you have this kind of facility? You know, for us in the Pacific, we would die for this kind of facility, you know. But, uh, you know, they've done a good job and they're still, you know, striving very hard to, to produce coaches that, you know, to educate coaches that can produce the athletes uh, on a world, you know, world, world stage. And, you know, uh, and uh, something that probably we can learn from. Mm. 
Well, let's just hope that uh, someone would be kind enough in the near future to <laughs> donate something like that so we can uh, have something similar. Anyway, thank you for your time, uh, Mr. Miller, and we right. wish you all the thank best you. Uh, yeah. for whatever you ha you've aimed for at uh, this year's Coke Games. There you go, that's uh, from Athletics Fiji. Stay with us as we speak to Banuve Tambakalozoro shortly. Win a Swire Shipping Fijian Drua Kids jersey! Simply like, share and follow our Fiji Times Kyla Facebook page, then tag in a friend on your shared post and mention who your favorite Swire Shipping Fijian Drua player is. All reactions will then go into a draw to win one of two Fijian Drua jerseys totally up for grabs. Conditions apply. Welcome and welcome back to the Lens at 177. We're talking about the Cokes uh, 2023. Uh, the games uh, will be held from Thursday to Saturday this year at the HFC Bank Stadium. When we talk about athletics in Fiji, uh, it can, the conversation can never be completed without the name Banuve Tambaka Zoro. You name it, be it the Zones, uh, the Coca-Cola Games, the Pacific Games, the Commonwealth Games, the Olympic Games, he's experienced it all. And, uh, we have him, we are fortunate to have him here to talk about the games today. Banuve, thank you for your time. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for Another year, another Cokes. Yes. Your thoughts on how this year's Cokes uh, is being lined up? Well, it's going to be interesting as it has been for like the past few years. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, we took a break in 2019 and 2020 uh, due to the COVID, but uh, I was a bit worried that things were going to be a bit slow, but you know, just picked up from where it left off. and. Mm -hmm. uh, really excited about uh, what the kids are going to show this year mm. um, especially it being the uh, um, year of the pacific game as well right in november um, this will be a good uh, trial and error for a lot of the kids that are trying to make the national team as well eh? mm. so it'll be very exciting mm. uh, while it's uh, coach is all about victories and uh, celebrations and those who win mm. uh, there are those who are disheartened who mm. go home empty-handed? Mm. There's, be, there's been times when you've you've been disqualified as well in mm -hmm. semi-finals, finals. Not mm. not just at the Cokes, at the at World Meets as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure it's not easy to mm. get get over it. Mm. But I guess the comeback is always better than the setback. Uh, mm -hmm. How how did you manage uh, things when you went through stuff like that? Uh, I, th I was very fortunate to have a very um, uh, strong family support eh? mm. and uh, they, they are the ones that got me through it and uh, the friends that I had, had in school as well. Eh? Uh, everyone got behind me and just told me to get back up on that horse and go again. Eh? Mm. So uh, yeah, I mean it's it's not the end of the road like uh, most people think. Eh? Mm. I mean the mm. Coke Games is just one step. I mean you have uh, the, the national team to make as well. So mm. for these athletes that come out and compete at the Coke Games, you know that that's not the that's not the final uh, straw for them. Eh? Uh, a lot of them I know will go back home uh, empty-handed, but you know there's always next year. Uh, mm -hmm. We always have the Team Fiji trials going on. Uh, a lot of these a athletes are late bloomers as well. Um, I'd like to be included in that as well. But uh, you know it, it's not the end of the road for them, mm -hmm. and I really encourage them to come out and compete, and you know just do your best. That's all mm -hmm. that we ask. Looking at the zones uh, so far this year, some very interesting times mm -hmm. recorded, some very interesting zones uh, yes. we've seen where, where it has only been decided with silver medals or just mm -hmm. by one single uh, gold medal. Yes. So uh, looking at that, we, we, we can qu quite confidently say that this year's Cokes will be really tight. Yes, I think uh, if I'm correct, a few years ago when Natam Boy, I think, had won back in 2017, mm. it came down to the final really, which was the senior boys 4x4. Okay. We might be looking at that again this year. Mm. I mean, there's so many good individual athletes from uh, all schools, you know. Uh, what I'm worried about is uh, the schools that come from the Maritime. Mm. Eh? They come with the most hidden talent. Eh? Mm. And uh, these are the athletes that really set the games alight. Mm. When one school is dominating, these are the ones that decide wh uh, which medal they are going to win. Eh? Mm. And uh, they tip, they usually tip the scales. Mm. And uh, it's going to be very exciting. Mm. And uh, I hope it's like 2017 again where it's decided on the final relay because you know everybody's on the edge of their seats for the full three days so mm. yeah, looking forward to it mm. the atmosphere at the cold games is totally different especially mm. for those athletes who come from the maritime zone mm. um, they, they'd be competing in front of uh, a few hundred of people and mm. then they're coming to you know compete in front of about 20,000 people mm -hmm. 
I, I'm pretty sure you would have experienced that when you've gone to other world meets from Fiji or you know the first ones that you've attended. How, how do you deal with that? You know, the pressure is on for you to perform, mm. whereas there's thousands of people cheering for other athletes yeah. so many a times. Yeah. How, how do you cope with that? Well, I think that's where we have the upper hand here in Fiji. We get to deal with that uh, pressure very early in our, uh, in our high school career. Mm. And uh, once you go over to all these other professional meets, it's not as noisy and it's not as um, uh, televised as much. as. But, uh, you know, uh, you learn to deal with the pressure. And uh, for most uh, athletes, uh, li like myself, it was make or break. Yeah? And, um, you know, once you have that good family support behind you as well and all your friends behind you as well, it makes things a lot easier as well. And uh, yeah, it all boils down to the training. You know, if you've been doing your work, you've been doing your homework, uh, mm -hmm. if you've been doing all that off-season training, you go into the games more confident and, uh, you know, just get to run and compete and, you know, throw, jump and, you know, just do your thing. Mm. Athletics Fiji has come up and said uh, a few times that there is a, a lot of uh, coaching being done, mm -hmm. athletes mm -hmm. being taken uh, and used into mm -hmm. other sports. I mean, mm -hmm. they choose that as a career. Mm -hmm. You opted for that as well. You mm -hmm. played a bit of rugby as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but in athletics, mm -hmm. you've traveled the world. You've made a name for yourself. People mm -hmm. know you mm -hmm. because of athletics. Yeah. Your message to you know the young ones out there who will be competing at this uh, year's games mm -hmm. as you know who would be thinking of maybe ma making a future in athletics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, rugby has always been the main sport here in Fiji, full stop. Mm. And, uh, you know, uh, I see athletics as uh, another avenue that the athletes can also, um, you know, venture into. Eh? And uh, not everybody will wear that uh, white jersey. Not all the boys, not all the girls will wear those white mm. jerseys. I mean, and even for athletics as well, not everybody is going to wear that white vest. And, uh, you know, you can always try in other sports as well. Eh? And it's, it's pretty tough, you know, the Fijian people are very gifted athletically and uh, across all sports mm. and uh, it's it's a tough world but then again you know it's it is what it is eh? mm. and uh, um, athletics has a very um, a small budget to work with every year and that's something that we've really struggled with mm. but uh, then again uh, we really need to dig deep and see how we can market the sport a lot better uh, i know i've been holding the fort for a few years now uh, I'm, I'm getting a bit tired mm. too um, but, you know, uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, I went on to rugby, enjoyed my time there as well, came back to athletics. Uh, but, you know, like I said, it, it, it is what it is. Eh? And uh, it's just the fact that this country loves rugby more than it does athletics. Eh? Mm. And um, But, uh, you know, this week is all about athletics and like a lot of people are looking forward to it. I mean, 90% to 95% of this country went to high, a certain high school they'll be cheering on their athletes. So everybody is a part of these games. Mm -hmm. yeah. Final question, a tough one. Mm. Uh, your picks for the senior boys and senior girls 100 meters at this year's games? Oh, it's going to be tough. I mean, I was just having a chat with uh, Eugene Volmer earlier on. Uh, we've got uh, five boys that have gone under 11 seconds uh, from all the different zones. Uh, leading the pack right now would be uh, the boy from Super Grandma. Um, grammar is always known for their, their sprinters, so you know, traditionally they'll always take uh, the lead. But you know, I'm not counting out all the other schools as well. You know, Mars is sitting there, QVS, RKS as well. Um, and Atambu is also stepping into the light as well. Um, and for the girls, uh, we have a defending champion from last year as well, from MGM coming in. Um, but I think uh, the David uh, girl will, you know, probably mm. pull something uh, out there as well. And you know, it all boils down to pressure. Whoever handles it better, you know, will walk away with that goal. So, yeah, those are my picks. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Barnes, and uh, all the best for the upcoming Pacific Games this year, and of course, uh, bigger events coming up next year. Yeah. Well, there you go. You heard it from the Pacific Sprint King. Stay with us as we speak to other stakeholders of this year's uh, Coca-Cola Games. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Good evening and welcome back to the Lens at 177. We're speaking now. We're talking about the 2023 Coca Cola Games, and uh, I like to call it the face of the Coke Games. Is we're speaking with uh, 
Koko lagi, Koko Cole is a national sales and marketing manager, Lawrence Tikaram. The Cole games every year, we see his face every year. And uh, as I said, I've always uh, liked calling him the face of the Coca Cola games. No Coca Cola games will be complete without uh, Lawrence Tikaram. Mr. Tikaram, thank you for your time. Thank you for speaking to the Fiji Times. Uh, another year, another Coke games. Uh, how's things building up uh, from uh, the sponsorship uh, perspective? Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the invite. And I think uh, it's an opportune time for us to provide the, you know, the news that uh, listeners and viewers are wanting to watch. I think the uh, preparation this year uh, uh, has taken a different level. Uh, one of the uh, main things that we changed this year is to involve the zone delegates. Now we have 17 zone delegates that look after the peripheral of the, of the Coca-Cola games in the 17 zone. So this year we've worked on it. Uh, it's a learning curve for m most of them, but I, I must say they have really stepped up to the market. They have proven beyond reasonable doubt that they have the capacity to deliver major events such as this. And uh, my hat goes out to the 17 zone delegates. Of course, uh, to meet uh, manager Bill the Light and of course the meet director uh, Master Wiluwanga, who we've been closely working together uh, over the last couple of months in preparing this national iconic event, which is the Coca Cola Games. Mm. Some zones uh, tickets ran out for grand standard places, and uh, uh, we we did witness grand um, back to the rafters uh, crowd at many of the zones. How's ticket sales going on for uh, this year's games? Well, it's, it's you said about the zones. I mean, the zones is now. Uh, really the launching platform for the Coco Games final, the Coco Games zones, and uh, it's good to see that the zone organizers have quickly adapted uh, to embrace that opportunity, and I think it's an opportunity that can be developed for the all uh, by getting uh, more use of the media and using more media to build up the events. But in terms of the finals, I can clearly say if you're looking for a grandstand ticket, uh, unfortunately they've all been sold out, mm -hmm. uh, and that was sold out as of yesterday. Uh, again, it shows the, uh, the talent and the, the following mm -hmm. that the Coca-Cola Games continues to draw not across just Fiji, but across the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we have many people calling in to find out whether it will be live stream or, or what was that. So we've asked them just to keep tuned and uh, stay up for details. But as in terms of grandstand tickets, they've all been sold out. Uh, I've just come back from the Fiji Sports Council. I've asked them to kindly start selling, pre-selling the ground and the cement embankment tickets. Uh, this is to avoid the rush on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. So you know, if you're watching, uh, please make your way down to the Fiji Sports Council tomorrow and try and get your ground tickets and your cement magma tickets to come support uh, the heroes of the event, which are the athletes. Mm. Uh, the Powerade National Torch Relay, I guess uh, the torch is resting at uh, the Coca-Cola factory in Lozala Beach right now. How, how is the response? I know uh, Onisimo, your team member, yes. he's, he's leading that. How has the response been from uh, the different schools that it has visited? I think one of the beauty about the uh, Powerade Coca-Cola Games Torch Relay is that it kind of embodies what the Olympic spirit is, and it's about reaching out to the peripherals of society, going out to many of these schools who won't be probably able to participate physically, but can participate spiritually at that, at that, uh, at that uh, uh, torch relay. But most importantly, getting them to feel the excitement of the games as you get, get up to the, uh, the build-up of the Coca-Cola games. I think it's also symbolic to note that you know, this year we've had to keep it uh, a bit tight because of the change in dates, but did not dampen the spirit at all for all the schools that, that gave great uh, reception to the, uh, to the torch. And again, you must, I must thank the principals uh, and the teachers and the coaches for being able to accommodate uh, the power of torch relay uh, because it is symbolic to the sense that that kind of starts the official journey of the Coca-Cola Games. Hmm. The Coca-Cola Games is part of the pathway, uh, students uh, starting from Inter House, then to the Zonal Meets, then to the Coke Games. We have seen in the past there's, there's so many talent, uh, so much talent available in the country, so many athletes come out of the Coke Games. What's in for athletes, uh, the, the top guns I should say, those who achieve good results? Uh, is there anything from the sponsorship perspective, uh, I would say scholarships maybe we, we, we available for these yeah. uh, students? I mean this is, a, this is a burning issue, I think that not only uh, we as organizers and sponsors talk about, but I think the whole country needs to address. Is that because uh, the retention, the, there needs to be a strong retention policy. And I think from the organizers and sponsors point of view, you know, we have we prepared the platform. Uh, the Coca Cola Games is where they come and showcase. I think it's moving on to the next step, which is the uh, Fiji Athletics Association, and then how that can be inculcated to some programs that then be able to support them moving forward to venture out into major uh, sporting international events. I think the retention policy has got to be lucrative enough uh, because right now it, it is a team event, even though it's an individual sport. Uh, team event in the sense it's fueled by school rivalry, which is great. Uh, you know, a rivalry on and off the field, which is awesome, uh, but friendly rivalry, uh, which is controlled. Mm -hmm. But I think once you step out of that school zone, then you become on your own, and you know that's where the uh, the contentious issue of you know do I go into more lucrative sports such as you know rugby and other uh, other sports to continue my career uh, mm -hmm. because then I'm a, I'm a standalone as an athlete. But like I said. The retention policy and the retention scholarships 
need to be seriously discussed at a national level uh, to ensure that we, we continue to provide support to many of these uh, young budding athletes. Mm. For some, this uh, core games o would be their first, some coming from the Maritime Islands. Uh, forget about competing, forget about being in front of 20,000 people mm. you know, running yeah. or competing in a, in a field event. Uh, in the past, I know Cox has uh, organized uh, uh, movie tickets and stuff like that. Any, any plans uh, for this? Uh, we're, we're fortunate to have a, a family for sponsors. You know, we're first of all, first, thank you to uh, Burger King for being one of the you know, providers of uh, many of the prizes that will be given to the athletes, but also uh, the more event cinemas. And I want to thank Mr. Damor and Div Damor for providing tickets uh, mm. for these winners as well. Apart from the monetary support, that will go to the winners of the overall uh, event, which is, I think, a total is about twenty thousand dollars. That will be split amongst all the winners themselves. Mm. And of course, we have sponsors from uh, Digicel mm. providing individual cash prizes. We also have sponsors from other media stations as well, providing sponsors uh, in terms of cash prizes for the athletes. More than two thousand athletes, close to twenty thousand spectators daily. You always say it will be bigger and better the the next year. Yeah. How, how how do you do it? Uh, I, I think it's, it's, the, it's the passion of the people that are involved behind the scenes and first of all I need to pass credit when credit is due and that goes to the teachers. The secondary school teachers have just been fantastic in their approach not only from the finals but from the, from the school sports days. You got to understand the, the birthplace of the core games is the, is the school sports days and from there it moves up to the uh, 17 zones which then culminates in the core core games finals. So the teachers and coaches have been the backbone of this and, uh, you know, and they are the ones that need to be called out and, uh, and, and given. Uh, the accolades where they deserve. Without them, this game would just not happen. Mm. Uh, so the teachers actually go over and above the call of duty to provide this. And uh, for that, we are deeply, truly grateful for the wonderful support of the teachers, the coaches, and the zone delegates who then uh, harness all the power and energy to bring and deliver a fascinating uh, three-day Coco event. Mm. Mr. Tikaram, your final message to the students and athletes <coughs> or, and the teachers and the fans uh, before, before we head into the games in the next few days? Uh, well, first of all, like I said, uh, you know, it is our national event. It is an event that is a celebration of life. It is an event that brings all old scholars together. I think it's the only event that keeps the nation to a standstill. Uh, and I think people should come out in numbers to support uh, their, their students at the, at the event. We talked about numbers, you know, you mentioned 2,000. I'm just uh, fine-tuning that now. It's 3,156 athletes as of now uh, from 151 secondary schools uh, to participate in this three-day event over, at over 360 events. So that's massive. That's massive in terms of numbers, in terms of following. And I uh, know that's going to set the, the platform. We have the maritime zone happening uh, this afternoon. Uh, uh, at the uh, stadium and that will add uh, more to the numbers but in terms of what I want uh, to say to the public is you know come on down support your, your students support these athletes who have probably given months and months of sacrifice I know that many of the build-up for many of the big schools started last year uh, actually didn't start this year so you know they're putting a lot of preparation and I think we're going to be uh, surprised with you know a lot of results uh, that will come out you know and I had mentioned to you earlier about uh, the zone delegates meeting that we had yesterday and how we want to improve uh, on the way forward. Uh, mm -hmm. But I guess we'll leave that for another time. But uh, a lot of good stuff coming out of that meeting and we look forward to seeing a lot of the uh, plans put into action for next year. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Tikam, and all the best for this year's games. You're welcome. Well, there you go, the stakeholders for this year's Skull Games. Everyone looking forward to three days of intense competition at the HFC Bank Stadium in Suva. Be sure to be there. If you can't make it, remember to get a copy of the Fiji Times for your daily updates. And of course, log into our Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter accounts, uh, and uh, our website, www.fijitimes.com, for the latest updates. Nisa Mode.